This viaduct was never originally going to be built, but a local aristocrat insisted on it, and so it was. A hundred years later it was supposed to be demolished, but the townsfolk were against it, and so it wasn't. And now it is subject to both a demolition order and a preservation order at the same time. Welcome to the 24 Halls of Friedberg in Hessen. The 19th century saw a revolution in long-distance travel. The railways made it possible to get to distant cities in hours instead of days. At the time, Friedberg was a provincial backwater to the north of Frankfurt, but that was about to change. Planning for the construction of the Main-Weser line from Kassel to Frankfurt began in 1841, just six years after Germany's first commercially successful locomotive, the Adler, was put into service. The history of Friedberg can be traced back to around the 12th century. Now, the average tourist would probably not find their way here, but if they did, they would probably content themselves with just uh, looking at the old town and the castle. Although, well, this is the castle, and really the word castle doesn't do it justice. So we will be getting back to that, but we're not average tourists. So... We're not going to content ourselves with that. At the time, Germany existed as the German Confederation, the successor to the defunct Holy Roman Empire, but still a mess of independent territories. This is what a political map of the area looked like. The railway was to go here, passing through the free city of Frankfurt, the Electorate of Hesse, and the Grand Duchy of Hesse, more popularly known as Hesse-Darmstadt. When the line came to be built, it included this viaduct just to the north of Friedberg, which can be seen very prominently in old photographs. It has 24 arches, which is why it came to be called the 24 Halls, although it is officially the Rosenthal Viaduct. And because at the time the past was the height of fashion, it was built to look like a Roman aqueduct. The viaduct was necessary to take the railway lines across the tiny river Uza, but there was a much cheaper and simpler option available, which was what the railway company actually wanted in the first place, to build the railway line on the other side of town. There was a problem though, and it was in the castle. When I say the castle, what I mean is a large fortified area that now contains, among other things, a school, the local tax office and dorms for college students. It was not what you might be imagining a castle to be. It was a whole complex as big as a village. This is one of Germany's largest castle complexes and it has a very long history. It was originally actually separate from the town itself, but for the purposes of this video, by the 19th century it was used as the summer residence of the Grand Dukes of Hesse-Darmstadt. And the one that interests us most is Ludwig II. He wasn't the nicest ruler you could have wished for. He was reactionary and authoritarian, which didn't do him any favours during the revolution of 1848. According to all the accounts that I've found, his coincidental death in that year was barely noticed by the general population. Now, you might be thinking that he didn't want the noise and smoke of the trains anywhere near his home, but you'd be wrong. See, the thing about Grand Duke Ludwig II is that he was something of an early train spotter. What he wanted to be able to do was to go out of his schloss and watch the trains go by. And so he ensured that the expensive route was chosen for the line with the expensive viaduct easily visible from his private residence. And by the way, this was a man who had tried to persuade the state to let him use taxpayers' money to pay off his personal debts. Not only that, but he managed to die before the viaduct was opened. Now, the sharp-eyed among you may have noticed that trains no longer run over the old viaduct. After over a hundred years, it was deemed in need of replacement, and in 1982, a modern viaduct was built. The Bundesbahn, the old national rail operator, was supposed to demolish the old viaduct, but local opposition led to it instead being put under a preservation order. 
But legally, the Bundesbahn successor Deutsche Bahn is actually required to demolish it, even though it can't legally be demolished. Meanwhile, it has been sold to a private investor who started putting solar panels on it, but was stopped from doing so by the authorities when huge mounds of earth slipped off during construction work. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yes, there are in fact three viaducts here. The original that used to carry the main line, its new replacement, and one that carries the branch line to Wolfersheim. This one was built in the 1930s to replace an original from 1897. So far, nobody seems to know what to do with Friedberg's 24 halls. So for now, the structure is just quietly crumbling away, existing, rather like Schrödinger's cat, in a superposition of two states, simultaneously preserved and demolished. Friedberg's other claim to fame is that it was where Elvis Presley was stationed when he did his military service, although he lived in the neighbouring town of Bad Nauheim. I've already made a video about that. Friedberg is a stop for some intercity and intercity express trains between Hamburg and Frankfurt, but can easily be reached by S-Bahn and regional trains from Frankfurt. However, there is construction work on that line, so there may be disruptions to services until early 2024.